Um, so this is, I'm going to talk today about a new research conducted together with Rick Townsend and Ting Xu about how COVID-19 affected talent flows to startups. Now, the motivation for this paper is coming from a long-standing debate, in fact, about the role of entrepreneurship in recession. And one view with respect to the role of entrepreneurs in economic downturns goes back to the cleansing view all the way to Schumpeter, arguably arguing that recessions are times of accelerated reallocation where startups are able to come in and disrupt existing um, incumbents. However, this view is coming under some pressure given increasing evidence that suggests that startups might be particularly vulnerable to economic downturns. Um, and most of, the, most of the evidence that points towards this vulnerability goes back to financing frictions where startup companies may be uh, particularly struggling to attract capital and financing that may inhibit them from accelerating reallocation during economic downturns. In this paper, we are going to explore a labor channel that discusses how startups might be affected by economic downturns in terms of their ability to attract human capital. And in particular, we are going to focus on the changes that took place at the emergence of COVID-19. So this question of how do downturns may affect talent flows to startups is at least theoretically ambiguous. On the one hand, you may think that the emergence of COVID may have increased workers' risk aversion and that may have led to what we call some sort of a flight safety where job seekers and employees may have uh, shifted their interest and preferences to join safer, arguably safer companies in larger and more established firms. But of course, one could argue the alternative hypothesis here, which is it could be the case that once COVID emerged, um, then there might have been lower uh, opportunity costs for employees where uh, some employees may have lost jobs, may have, have faced worse career trajectories, and that may have um, increased the tendency to join uh, riskier companies given the lower opportunity cost. Regardless of uh, the stories, the key issue in terms of resolving this ambiguity is an empirical one. The key, the question is, how do we distinguish between labor supply from demand? How can we identify whether or not employees' preferences have shifted once COVID emerged? There are two, at this point, standard data sets that people have used in study labor outcomes. Uh, one is to use employment data. The limitation of employment data is that it, it basically captures an equilibrium outcome. For example, if startups are hiring less workers, um, in response to COVID, um, it is really hard to disentangle whether this is because the, the hiring policies of the startups have changed, that is their demand has changed, versus the alternative story, which we're interested in, whether workers uh, have shifted their preferences away from joining early stage companies. An alternative uh, source of data re may rely on job posting data, but again, job postings may capture um, particularly the demand side, rather than um, allowing us to explore changes in preferences of uh, job seekers and employees. So in order to identify or explore changes in the supply side of labor to early stage companies, we are basically going to rely on the novel data from Angelist Talent. Angelist is a platform that connects investors and startups, and in particular, they have this section that is uh, uh, of talent where it allows tech companies and particularly private companies and entrepreneurial firms to attract um, employees and talent. Now I should note that on this platform, which is arguably the largest platform for private and entrepreneurial firms, this platform also attract um, um, a wide variety var variation across the size distribution of firms. So all the way from companies with less than 10 employees to companies like Uber and Facebook who are recruiting on the platform. And the novelty of this data is coming from the fact that we are going to have access 
to the backend servers of Angelis, where we're going to be able to explore the behavior of job seekers on the platform. What do I mean by that? I mean that we are going to, at the emergence of COVID-19, we are going to be able to see how job seekers have changed their search behavior, what kind of companies they were looking for, what kind of filters they applied for the job uh, search they conducted. And, um, and at the same time, we're going to be able to explore what kind of applications they have, uh, what kind of companies these job seekers have actually applied to, and therefore characterize how the talent pool um, has essentially changed for startups during uh, COVID. So before I get into details, let me briefly tell you what we find. We find that at the onset of COVID-19, job seekers search for larger and more established firms. At the same time, job seekers seem to broaden their search criteria, willing to consider lower wages and wider variety of job types, roles, industries, and locations in order to be affiliated with these bigger and more established companies. We find that job seekers shift their applications. So it's not just in a search outcome, but also the actual uh, applications to companies are shifting towards larger and later stage firms and interestingly, this effect is driven by higher quality candidates, which I will specify later how we define these. So all in all, we find that relative to larger firm, nascent startups are experiencing a decline in the quantity and the quality of job applications that they are, that they are having access to, even when we're following the same job posting over time. So um, controlling for any changes um, in uh, a, a holding fixed the demand for the particular type of job that these companies are searching for. All right, so um, let me il illustrate briefly what this Angelis talent platform look like. So here's a, um, a search outcome. Ting Shu is my co-author searching for a data scientist job in Washington, DC. And one of the job outcomes um, is Oroch Technologies. This is a, basically an analyst job uh, located in Washington, DC. And you see here the, the compensation in terms of cash, but also the equity component of the compensation. Importantly, the number of jobs on the platforms is more than is, is tens of thousands of jobs. So job candidates or job seekers must filter how they are searching. And these filters are quite flexible. You can filter based on compensation, based on the markets, the type of job. Most importantly for our purpose, they, uh, job seekers can uh, search based on the size of the company they're interested in. We're also going to be interested in this investment stage of the company. Is this a early stage company or a later stage company? So let me show you, uh, so, so we are basically going to be able to utilize this data to understand what exactly are the searches that job seekers are, are employing on the platform. In addition, we're gonna be able to see what kind of companies they actually apply for. So the first set of results, simply look at the size, distribu uh, the size of the companies that job seekers are looking for right after COVID. And here we're defining COVID as the emergence of COVID um, at March 13, which is the day in which Trump announced um, a, a state of emergency. But of course, um, uh, that's not necessarily the precise day that one would classify that, but that's, and we will show um, this in figures um, um, to illustrate the changes as well. So what we can see, for example, in column two, in column two, we can see that there has been a significant increase in the sizes of companies that job seekers are searching for on the platform. I would note that first we're including here uh, job seeker fixed effects. So we are basically exploring changes in, uh, we are exploring changes in the search characteristics of users over time. So we're looking within users so, um, and this reflects a roughly 25% increase in the average size of companies that were searched for once COVID emerged. In column four, you can see that 
the tendency to search for companies that have um, a size of more than 500 employees has jumped by more than 20%. So here's a, a, graph, a figure that illustrates that visually. You can see that around mid-March, which is when um, uh, Trump announced a state of emergency, you can see that the average size of the searches of companies on the platform has increased dramatically. Now, at the same time, if uh, while job seekers are shifting their focus on a particular or smaller set of firms on the market, we find that job seekers are relaxing other search criteria. So we find that in order to be affiliated with, uh, to, to identify um, job postings of larger companies, job searches, um, uh, job, job seekers are willing to engage with these companies um, by, through an internship, they're more likely to uh, uh, agree to take an internship, to become contractors, and they're in fact willing to lower the minimum salary um, that they're looking for. And at the same time, they are becoming less specific in terms of the numbers of roles, number of markets and number of locations that they are willing to entertain in order again to be uh, um, um, affiliated with larger uh, and more established companies. The evidence so far illustrates that significant changes in the searches that job seekers apply, capturing their preferences. And this measure captures as well as we can the labor supply side um, of job seekers. Now, the question is whether it translates to actual changes in the nature of applications. So, and it does. So what we find is that the average size of companies that receive job applications on the platform is increasing. But interestingly, the increase is actually concentrated among the more experienced and the more uh, the higher quality uh, candidates. So what do I mean by higher quality candidates? Here we are relying on Angelis score. So Angelis created this algorithm that incorporates the institutions, the academic institution of job candidates, their experience and the type of companies they work in to generate a score that ranks the quality of uh, the job candidate. And they are using that for their commercial purposes. Um, and what we find is that the increase in the tendency to apply for larger companies, as you can see in column three, is concentrated among those higher quality. So we are partitioning here simply by the median. You can see that the higher quality individuals are those that are shifting their um, applications towards larger companies. These results also hold when we are incorporating um, a, a candidate fixed effects. And then the results could be explained by the fact that maybe higher quality candidates may have more flexibility to apply to a wider variety of roles within larger companies or they may also have higher opportunity costs and therefore they might be more likely to avoid joining uh, companies that are particularly risky when COVID emerges. The next, um, uh, the next thing that, we, that I want to share is basically moving towards the startups and the firm themselves, how the pool of talent available for these companies has basically shifted. The first thing that I want to share is the um, changes in the volume of job applications. And you can see that once COVID emerged, both early stage companies in red and later stage companies has experienced a decline in the number of applications per job posting. However, you can see that towards the end of March, there is a divergence between late and early stage companies where early stage companies are experiencing a lower um, um, number of applications per job posting relative to uh, later stage companies. So this divergence is coinciding with COVID-19 outbreak um, around late March. Now, one would wonder, you know, even if the decline of the pool of talent 
uh, is, uh, it, it takes place, the question is how does the quality of the pool available for startups um, um, is changing? And what we find is uh, quite striking. So on the y-axis, we are um, uh, plotting the, the average quality um, of applicants uh, over time. And you can see that before COVID um, took place, you can see that um, small firms are able to attract higher quality of um, job applicants when compared to larger firms. However, this trend is completely reversing once COVID hits, meaning that we see that there is a significant decline in the average quality of the applicants that are applying for smaller firms, while larger firms find uh, experiencing similar decline, but this decline is actually quickly reverses and um, increases. Um, and this is not the case. This is not the case when it comes to smaller firms. So what's, how do we interpret the findings? So we find um, a mechanism of uh, flight to safety that uh, um, job candidates are shying away from um, smaller and early stage companies moving toward larger and more established companies. Now, this shift to arguably safer companies is likely to emerge because of changes in the beliefs that took place at the early stage um, um, uh, following the emergence of COVID. Just as a reminder, we are capturing the effects really at the first couple of months of COVID before economic outcomes or real fundamental shifts has took place with respect to um, the, the companies themselves. So we believe that most likely this shift is driven by beliefs of job candidates about the ability of larger companies to secure financing, the ability to maintain product demand and, 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 and remain employed within these companies. Now, whether these beliefs are rational or irrational, they nevertheless uh, represent and potentially uh, uh, capture the driving force for the mechanism in which downturns and particularly COVID negatively impact the ability of startup companies to attract um, 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 talent. And, um, and where we find that startups were facing smaller and lower quality pools of talent following the emergence of COVID. So to conclude, what we uh, find here, we uncover a labor channel that explains um, the startup's vulnerability to economic downturns. So smaller nascent ventures seem to struggle to attract human capital relative to larger established firms once COVID hits. And we find that both quantity and quality of talent flows deteriorated. And importantly, the effect is mostly driven by the higher quality candidates and this is particularly damaging given the importance of human capital uh, to uh, new firms.